Supposing you want to convert a procedural texture on a model into an image-based texture on a model. Unfortunately, you cannot uh, just export the model to DAS Studio because the bridge doesn't have that functionality. So let's explore this. There are ways to do it, but it's <coughs> tricky. Uh, and it can all be done in Bryce, that's a nice thing. So I'm going to use this uh, this bunny model that uh, Horo converted from the uh, from the models at the scanning repository. Uh, it's got a nice mesh, but it's quite low resolution, which is handy for later tutorials. At the moment, we're just going to convert the uh, texture, and that will be enough, trust me. So I've brought this model in. I'll give it a quick render, and you'll notice that it's facing away from us. And that's probably not going to be the side that you want to 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 be having uh, looking at the camera. So we'll work on the assumption that we're going to turn the model round, and uh, this will be a helpful part of it. So let's say that we're oops, we're, we've turned our model round, we are positioned our camera and to make things extra tricky, so it's a good robust test of this approach what I'm going to do is uh, put on it a procedural texture that's world space mapped. Now the significance of that is when you use world space mapping well, I'll just render on the actual object, there we go, there's on our bunny the pattern itself is linked to the origin of the world so if you move the object like this, then the pattern will change. And if you rotate it, likewise, it'll change. So look at that spot on his uh, on his nose there. If I move it, move the rabbit now even slightly, it's it's changed the pattern. So this is significant because supposing the pattern you've got is is world space map, and you definitely want it from this position in space. Uh, it means that when you capture the texture, it's got to be done from this position in space. So what I'm going to do is, I'll save this scene, so I'll call this uh, be bunny, right? And then we can come back to this and, and test our texture against this when it's when it's done. So I'm going to edit and copy the matrix of that bunny, and then I'm going to get rid of the infinite plane because I don't need it. This is where we're going to capture the texture. So I'm going to take the bunny and I'm going to drop it down to the world origin without any rotation. So just take away the rotations and drop it into the world origin. I've not changed the scale of it. Now I'm going to take the perspective camera and likewise I'm going to drop it down to the origin. Okay, remember the dotted lines it's field of view. We're going to use those in a second. And I'm going to slide it back along the z-axis so you can see that the field of view is spreading out. So if I render it from this position now, we're, we're, we're rendering the back of the bunny. And also, because the bunny is more like a square, I'm going to change the document setup to square for our mapping, so that's going to change the field of view situation slightly now. And uh, and then the consideration is, uh, do, I, do I map the back or do I map the front? I can only map one side using this approach and I've not worked out a better one yet. So because we're looking from the front, I'm going to flip the bunny around so it's facing the camera. Right, so now I've got the bunny facing the camera. I want to get a flat projection of this. Now, as in the previous uh, tutorial, which uh, also related to mapping, I'm going to use a cube. I'm going to place this cube on the world origin and it's going to go to where the camera is. Now, uh, it's the requirements for this is just that it's it's on the same axis of the camera. I don't need to accurately position it over the focus, but I do need this front face to be wider than the field of view. Now the material for this, as before, in the other tutorial is transparent with refraction zero that's important because it causes the normals to go directly off the front so we can convert this um, perspective view into a front face view so let's have a look how things are looking at the moment for the mapping mode that I'm going to use I need this I want either the, the, the height or the width to touch the edge now to make life easier and to demonstrate, what I'm going to do is turn the atmosphere off and set it to, uh, say, a bright orange. And I'm going to go into the material for the bunny. This is just for demonstration purposes, so we'll we'll come to doing a practical one later on, uh, to being ambiently lit, so we can see all of the checks on it, even in the shadow regions. You can see the shadow regions are still there, but what I want to do is show how this, how the the result of this mapping is going to work out. So, uh, what I need to do is get the edges of these this bunny in to the the scene. Now I can w narrow the field of view and keep rendering, but I mean it's a bit fiddly. The other thing you can do is change the size of the cube. 
because you've got to bear in mind the normals come in off front so if you make the cube smaller it actually has the effect of making the bunny get bigger in the view and that's because this intersection point between these two is moving in there so because of the relationship between these two if you consider where this line crosses we can actually do a bit of a calculation using just the edge of a cube so I'll create another cube I'm not going to use this in my scene I'm just using it to find where the bunny's tail is there and then I can modify the size of this cube so it reaches the intersection point between those three lines so if I do that that was a bit fiddly there we go right now hopefully the bunny's getting very close to the to the edge so it just makes just makes that fiddly process so I'll bring that cube in so it needs to be a bit closer in I can see where the lines cross over and scale it back again I say it's not the easiest to think because of the divisions in Bryce are making life tricky for me okay so the tails touching the edge and the nose is touching the edge so that's optimized we don't want any of this orange showing and I don't need this cube here now so now I've set that up I need to get all this in position where the bunny was originally in the world so we can capture the texture from that position because at the moment the texture you can see is just a flat grid because it's not because the texture is aligned with the world space but the bunny wasn't aligned with the world space before so to restore that position we take the perspective camera and use the attributes and link it to the bunny now because we turned the bunny around 180 degrees because we want to get this front now the camera has been flipped so it's facing away which is a little inconvenient so if we go into the attributes for the camera and modify the y value 180 degrees that flips it back to the front this cube we want to link to the camera so that's going to follow the camera around so the relationship between the cube and the camera are remaining the same and the relationship between the camera and the bunny so at this point we get the bunny and we edit and we paste its matrix back in so now when we swi switch to the camera view we've got the bunny in its world position with the texture as it is just there and it's and the camera and the cube have followed it so that's ideal so that is our map so we'll save as map now bear in mind this is the the the, the front of the bunny and the bunny came in the other way around so it's entirely possible at this point we may end up having to flip the image again because of the way the mapping modes work in Bryce so we'll come to that now I'll bring in my original file so bear in mind the front of this object as far as Bryce is concerned when it loaded it in is the back of the bunny so if I go to the material now and go and convert this to a picture and then load my picture map in okay and then switch it to object front you can see already it's not right and then switch it here we're, we're, the maps failed because these yet orange areas are not are not bunny they're outside bunny and that's because it's actually mapping for the back of the bunny when we mapped it for the front that was the flipping thing so let's take the image and I'm using paint shop pro and uh, let's find a word image mirror so I mirror that and then uh, uh, no, I won't save as I'll just save copy as because it'll save it as a JPEG it just uh, makes life easier uh, ideally though you want to save always uh, without compression because Bryce is going to uncompress anything anyway and uh, the procedural materials were very good uh, you want a really good re representation you'd want to use high resolution capture but for the purposes of this demonstration we'll just use JPEG and a low resolution image so I go into the material now and load in my mirrored image that I've flipped around left to right so there we go and it's object front but now the front's the back so that should mean we've got everything set up correctly so now that's an image map and uh, you can see whether it's any good by looking round at the side and these yellow bits are obviously where a alignment uh, failure has occurred so there's my image map I suppose what I should do is I'll just restore the original file and let that render out which won't take very long right, uh, file save and then I'll go back and map in my image map that I've created so that's picture do it's going to be slightly different because I recorded it uh, 
well, we'll 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 discuss the the implications of recording it with different uh, lighting because obviously this has got some light baked into it, which may or may not be appropriate for yeah, your mapping. I mean, if you if you bake shadows into things, object front, then that might save you render time later on when using different render modes. But at the moment, we're just concerned with converting the pattern. So there we go. That's now our version with the uh, with the texture map, that's, uh, the image map. So if I save those, uh, this one as a different one, uh, save as bunny image, and then I'll use PaintShop Pro to uh, compare the two. So that's our procedural texture, and there's our image one. And I'll just Control C the image one. And close it down and control L so it comes on as a new layer and then you can see the the drawbacks of this because uh, the angle is getting very shallow when it's going over the back then um, it gets stretched and the other thing is we've only got the front of the image so the back of the image is just a mirror of the front so it breaks down at that point so if you've got your camera overlooking it or too far around the side then uh, then it's not going to work. What you really need is to be able to map a front and back on or do full UV mapping. But this is, it's not bad on the areas that are facing the camera as you might expect and gets weaker at the edges. However, it will allow us to do some uh, fancy effects in Bryce and possibly save some render time as I say by baking the uh, like occlusion into the texture for the model. If, if I could just interrupt myself there, it occurred to me while I was editing this video that since we've gone to the trouble of setting this up anyway, might as well just do uh, something a bit more interesting in this checker pattern. So what I'm going to do is load in a HDRI image from the Metals 2 set. Uh, it's just going to be used as a reflection, so there it is. I'm going to increase its brightness a bit so we can see it reflected in the material I'm going to use. And uh, I'll set the specularity and HDRI effect down rendering scene can't see very much at the moment doesn't really matter we'll need the sunlight for the effect on this material and I'm going to choose one of the metal materials so I'm just swapping the uh, the the material for uh, for another one without moving anything that's the key so I'll use this one here this is a, a curvature material which will bleed into the next video you see because one of the drawbacks with using a curvature material is the mesh of the model and the mesh of this model I deliberately chose to be low resolution so it shows up where this goes wrong at the moment the uh, I'm going I'm to put the background fully black and then add this into the sky so we get the benefit of this HDRI image reflecting on the model so there we go so now we've got a few highlights from the HDRI and as you can see this is, is rendering fairly quickly it's quite dark around this side and bear in mind the lighting is more or less the same as it was so would have shadows uh, twice in this case which uh, which may mean we don't need shadow casting in this so if you imagine this was much more complicated setup then the, the there's advantages in um, splitting the the image uh, the lighting up between two renders but as I say we'll come to that uh, topic later on uh, I'm just rendering this out I could use HDRI lighting and that would create a different uh, effect in terms of what you get in the shadows uh, again that's on, on to another topic there for the most part I just wanted to show the, how we could use this now we'd set it up straight away in the other scene so if I save this once it's rendered which is now so I'll save this as map 2 right out and then go back to our bunny image map scene and modify the material here load in this different map which ah, will have to be flipped won't it I don't think there's a way of doing this in Bryce I don't think there's an option to flip it round so I'll have to use PaintShop Pro sorry there we go and image mirror file save copy as since it's saved as a, a bitmap image then it, it'll load in it'll not overwrite it with the JPEG one so flip our bunny round so we've compensated for the fact that the front's the back in this case and now render there we go we've got we've got very basic lighting in this scene but quite a complicated effect it does show up the drawback on the on the back of the image there so for the next tutorial as a bit of a preview what we'll do is we'll look at sorting out this problem for curvature because this uh, is a mesh smoothing issue in Bryce 
and if that was fixed then would have the capability of uh, of having a better curvature filtering on low resolution mesh models but you can get round it it's uh, it will we'll start off from where we were in this tutorial with the bunny and uh, we'll look at ways of getting round it and uh, that should be quite interesting okay then i uh, hope you enjoyed that we'll see you in the next tutorial hopefully